And the first thing you really need... That was upside down. Hello folks! Welcome to another video with me, Stephanie Canada, the owner of Backroom Finds. I'm passionate about vintage, sewing, and not taking myself too seriously. If that sounds like a great time to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can watch my videos every Tuesday and Friday. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the three things that I find help when sewing vintage. Vintage as being described as anything pre-1979. Now, you can feel free to disagree with me if you use any of these items in sewing modern to regular clothes, or if you use them just on everyday average sewing, embroidery, etc. If you do disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. I am not perfect. But let me know down in the comments because I'd like to know how you use these items in your everyday sewing. Now for me, we're going to start from my least used item to my most used item. And let's be real, there's really only one thing I don't use a whole lot, and I probably should. But here we are. So let's uh, grab our coffees. Why, thanks, Mr. Potato Head. Yes, I do think we should go on this journey together and get looking at some stuff. The first up is going to be thimbles. Sorry, ASMR folks, I had kind of had to. Do you need a giant bag of vintage and or relatively modern thimbles? No, you sure do not. But what I use them for is when I'm doing all that vintage sewing that vintage patterns and books love to call for, I want to make sure that I have a thimble so that I don't destroy my fingers like I did on my daughter's pinafore in this video right here. Now, when I do remember to actually grab a thimble out of my bag, which is not often, I will aim for one of these. Where'd it go? <laughs> I'll aim for one of these too. Thimbles are sized. Now they don't always have the size on them, but when you go into the store, you can either buy a one size fits all or you can get a sized thimble. Or at least she used to be able to. I don't know, I haven't bought a thimble in forever. I just magically appear with them after an estate sale, so I don't know if they're sized anymore. They may be, they may not be. Let me know down below if they still do that. These are my two favorites when I do remember them. This guy right here, which is things I can't read. You have a stamp. What do you say? You say... I guess a number nine. A number nine is what this one is. The number nine fits on my middle finger. And the number eight fits on my pointer finger. Depending on my mood, these are the two that I normally use. Now, you don't always have to go with a metal thimble either. You can opt to do a leather thimble, which will normally work on any of your fingers. One, because you can make them yourself. And two, because they're a bit more flexible and not quite so restrictive as the metal. I would love to show you my leather thimble, but um, I can't find it. I hunted for about 20 minutes and have no idea where I've put it. So there's that. Now I will say that there is a lovely YouTuber that I follow. Her name is Bernadette Banner. She did an excellent video about how to use thimbles that expounds upon this entire idea so much better than I could ever describe it. So I'm gonna make sure to link that down below so that way if you have more questions about thimbles or their uses, she can fully explain it to you. Because I normally don't use them and then end up with sore fingers when I'm done. Because that's what happens. The second thing I find most useful when doing vintage sewing is, of course, that vintage sewing pattern. For me, I am a purist. I enjoy vintage sewing patterns because they were sized to fit one size. Do they always fit our modern day sizes? No. No, they don't. For a plethora of reasons that I will happily go into if anyone would like a video on that. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that. However, due to undergarments being different and many, many, many other reasons, these don't always fit out of the box or out of the bag, as it were. Envelope? Envelope. However, I do find them to be much more fitting effective than modern day patterns. Your next question to me may be, but Stephanie, can I use a reproduction pattern? Aren't those the same? Let me just say that reproduction patterns are not the same as the originally produced patterns for many reasons that I will briefly glance over right now. But again, if you'd like me to expound upon more, let me know down in the comments because I have many, many, many thoughts on this. The reasons I find vintage showing patterns work better than reproductions are, first up, 
you had the original designer and draft team working on the pattern alongside the drawing. The reproduction patterns, as I have been told, only are based on the original drawings, and of course the designer is long gone, so you don't actually know what the construction was, they're going off the line drawing that was presented to them years ago. Because most companies didn't opt to save their original patterns, so they don't actually know what the lines were originally. I've heard tell that some companies actually are buying back their original patterns so they can reproduce them more correctly, which I find very interesting and odd. But hey, I guess I never expected folks in 2020 to want to make dresses from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. To be fair, I can't necessarily say that patterns that are being made now I would expect to be made in 90 years either. So, fair. Fair. The second reason I like the original vintage patterns is because they actually come with the original lines, as opposed to multi-line sizes that make me very, very confused. I like one line. I don't want multi-lines. My brain mushes them all into one big thing and I'm like, I don't know which line to cut. So I much prefer it when there is one singular size for that one singular thing. Do I have to size it up normally? Of course I do. And the third and final and most important item that you will need when sewing vintage? Eee! That vintage sewing book. There is absolutely nothing that beats original source material, period, full stop. If you want to sew a vintage pattern and you get confused along the way, which you've seen me get confused many a time here on this channel, what is the first thing I grab for? My vintage sewing book. So whatever era you're looking to sew from, whether it is the 30s, 40s, 50s, etc., Make sure you have a vintage sewing reference for that time period. Does it have to be exact? Absolutely not. Now, when I do occasionally get the urge to sew a 1930s sewing pattern, which happens a lot, but I don't actually do it because I'm scared. Hashtag real life. What I do is I grab my 1927 art of dressmaking book so that as I begin to read the instructions for the pattern that I still have not actually made, I can try and reference it from this because the patterns that you were provided in a 1930s or 40s pattern were one-sided if you're lucky. Maybe you got two-sided if you, they really wanted to tell you how to make it, but normally they were one-sided and very shortly worded. But this book really shows you exactly how in period style you should aim to make that garment, which I truly enjoy. Do I always do it correctly? Heck no. The other book I own that you have definitely seen if you've been on this channel for longer than 13 seconds, my 1954 Singer Sewing Book. Did I do a parody about one of the pages? Absolutely I did. I'll put that in the card above and down below in case you wanna watch me make an idiot of myself. This one has saved my butt. It taught me how to do a hand-rolled hem. It has shown me how to do a skirt waistband when I wasn't using a pattern. These two books are truly the reason why any of my vintage projects even get done. I am notorious for leaving behind UFOs all around me. UFOs, for those of you that don't know, are unfinished objects. I have a crap load of them. I even have some that I've bought at estate sales from other people. I don't know why. Do you want to see me tackle someone else's UFO? Let me know down in the comments. I'd be intrigued to see if anyone else wants to watch me falter through someone else's UFO that I had nothing to do with laying or cutting out. And yes, you can tell me to do it just so you can laugh at me. That's perfectly acceptable. So what these books allow you to do is really go into the pattern that you're looking at. If you find a moment where you're like, I don't know what's happening. They're going to be your resource. They're going to save you. Most times. Sometimes they might just confuse you further until you eventually figure out what you're looking for. Not that it's ever happened to me, but really they are there to save you. For example, so let's say I eventually make up my Simplicity 2179 from the late 40s, early 50s. I forgot to check the wiki before I did this. But let's say I want to dive into this bad boy. It's super cute. It's a bus 38. Am I a bus 38? Heck no. So I'm going to have to do the full bust adjustment and all that stuff. But let's just say for giggles that I am a bust size 38 and this would fit me straight out of the bag. I'm going to pull out my instructions and my pattern. Now for this one, we have crossed over into the time period where they are printed pieces. Huzzah! Although I don't really mind the unprinted ones. They work just as well for me, but everyone has their own thing. Open. Okay, great. Yes, this is exactly as useless as I had hoped. Excellent. 
No, I didn't look at this pattern before I decided to use it as an example. I don't know what you're talking about. So for this pattern, you can see it's one-sided on the front and one-sided on the back. And that's all you get, friends. To make this entire dress, you have a front and a back side of which are very small and not necessarily super helpful. The only upside to this pattern is that because it is printed, you do get a little bit of extra information along the pattern piece itself, but not much. So that's why your book's really gonna come in handy, because it's gonna walk you through the rest of the steps that the book assumes you already knew from your home economics class growing up in the 40s and 50s, which we don't get now. Now let's jump back in time a little bit farther to Simplicity 3093, which is going to be late 30s, early 40s, you have this one, which is going to be right in between my two books. So my 1927 book, probably not so helpful in this one. My 1950s book probably has different wording than what's going to be in this instruction packet. What do you do when that happens? Well, you go online and you check to see if any sellers have PDF copies of reference books that are close to the one that you're looking for. Look at that! A 1941 Dewberry sewing manual. So that's going to be the one that I would use. Is this my book? Yes, friends. Yes, it sure is. And what I'm going to do for you guys is if anyone would like to come and buy this from me, I'm going to offer half off to all of my viewers on this lovely PDF sewing book so that you can begin sewing some 1940s patterns all for yourself. It does actually have a period measurement chart as well and tells you how to measure yourself. Make sure you use the code YT50 when you go to checkout. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed going through this video with me today and learning about the couple of items that I think are absolutely necessary when sewing vintage. If you liked this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you want to see more from me, go ahead and click the subscribe button, making sure to turn on that bell for post notifications. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. See y'all next time. That was better. Gee, look what happens when you think through your thoughts. And yes, friends, I do live in Florida because this is not normal. I feel like Hermione in book one. It's what happens when I let my hair down. Suddenly I forget all the words. Vintage sewing book. Tell me how do I make this pattern? There's some type of deck of cards shenanigans joke happening here. I don't know what it is. Three main things that I find help to sew from vintage. For vintage? For vintage. Should have written this down. Did not. Fail. Now, when I do remember, I use, oh, remembering the date. I don't remember. 27? Did I show you the back? No. <laughs> That's not helpful. You won't be able to see Jack. It will be out of focus. What is that? Oh, it had the original receipt in it. Cute.